Welcome back everyone. So in the previous video we learned about creating this component and now we're going to continue from where we left. We've got all of the um, properties in the state uh, for our create the post component and we're going to go ahead and create the post. So I just want to show it to you that where we store the token. I think we already discussed that in the previous videos but just to refresh our memories. So once we log in and hit enter, notice what happens here. So you can see we've got the token available and we've got the username available. Okay. Now, just to let you know that local storage is not very safe to store uh, sensitive information like a token over here. A lot of people do it and recommend to do it, but to be very honest, it's not very safe. So this is readable. Anyone can copy this and take it. But uh, in case, for example, if you leave your PC open, they can come and take this token and, and go ahead and uh, request Ajax request using this token. They'll try to behave as you uh, by using your token. Okay, so you have the cross-site request forgery uh, problem over there. So, but I'm still showing it because a lot of people, uh, you know, are will take care of their own security and and they're okay to take that risk and they're happy because. Uh, you know, local, using local storage is pretty simple and pretty easy. You can access this token with your JavaScript. So there's another way to do this is using cookies, but uh, I'm going to share that to you in the upcoming videos. Uh, and I'm going to we're going to continue with that approach, and I will tell you why when I do that. Both the uh, use cases, uh, in in fact, using uh, storing the data in the cookie or in the um, Local storage is vulnerable. We can let the server set the cookie and then uh, we can send that cookie uh, in each of our requests to authenticate that it's actually the uh, user's request, the actual user's request. Okay, so I'm gonna show you both the um, ways to do it. So we'll start with the local storage and then we'll progress along using the cookie option. Okay, so let's continue. So actually, we don't need the user ID because when you pass the token in the headers, it would already have the uh, user data into it. Okay, so it'll know which user you were creating the post for. So all we need is just the token. So we'll just say const token local storage dot get item, and we'll say token. Later on, we can store this information into context as well. But uh, the reason I'm not doing that is because uh, probably later on we're going to use we're going to use the cookies, so we won't have to actually store all of that information. We probably want to use user uh, name and you want to set, put that in context, but not actually the token. So the token will be set in the uh, cookies. All right. So for now, let's stick to this. So we've got the token inside of the local storage. So if we go on to applications. You can see that you have got the token available. Okay, so that's all we need, and we just need to set that inside of the state. So we'll just say token. I mean, you can write like this token, token, but in ES6, you already know you can just simplify this by just putting this. It's I mean the same thing. Okay, let's get rid of the user ID. We don't need that for now, at least. Okay, so you've got that, and then inside of the render method, all we have to do is just pull all of this information from to, from our state. So we'll pull loading using object destructuring. We'll put, pull the message and post created or not. So that's a Boolean value. And then this is this dot state. Okay, so we're just pulling all of that data from there. And we're just going to create a form for ourselves inside of this. So we just say form. Okay, and then there won't be any action because we're not handling this through PHP. We are going to be handling through JavaScript. Okay, so it's just going to have an on submit event. So on submit, and let's just uh, put a custom function and let's call it handle form submit. Okay, and let's go ahead and give it a class name. Let's give it some margin on top, like uh, 50 pixels, and uh, Let's also give it a max width. So I'm just saving time. So I'm just going to put the inline style, but ideally you shouldn't do it. You should put it into your style.css. Okay, so just give it 500 pixels. In fact, 800 should be fine. Great. 
handle form submit. Let's put that here. Okay. Okay, so you've got the handle form submit going on there, and then let's just give it a heading. Let's put that in legend. And let's say create post. And let's give it a class name. Let's just give it some margin. Margin bottom 40 pixels. And then we're going to have a alert also in case if we uh, throw any errors. So we'll just say message. So if the value of the message is set, where is the message gone? I think we haven't set the message, have we? No, we haven't. So we'll just say message over here. Okay, so in case uh, if we have any message available, then we're just going to show that inside of the div and we'll give it a class name of alert. So we're using Bootstrap to save time. So, and then we're going to check. In fact, let's wrap it in backtick. Okay finally okay then we'll check if the post is created so if the post is created this is going to be true if it is true then it's going to be success so alert success if not then it, it needs to be danger because that means it's uh, if the post is not created then any message that we get should actually be uh, a warning about some of the fields uh, that are not not set etc okay and uh, we're going to use the uh, danger release set html because the uh, message that we're going to receive from the server would be would contain some of the uh, you know html also okay so but uh, we won't worry about that just yet so let's just leave it as message for now and i'm going to worry about that later okay awesome so I'm going to show that to you and then we'll change that to uh, dangerously, dangerously set HTML. Okay. Now we'll go and put our inputs. So we'll set div and let's give it a class name of form group. Form group. Okay. Let's give it a label and um, let's put it as title. Okay, inside the label we'll say title, which is the title of the post, and then input type is equal to text. Let's give it a name of title. Okay, and then we'll put an on change event handler. So on change event handler this dot handle input change. So this is a custom function that we're going to just put on top, which we'll deal with later. Awesome. And um, just, let's just give it a class, a bootstrap class. Let's say class name, say form control. And then let's give it an ID of title because we have an HTML4. So it's going to link to that. And let's see what we've got so far on the front end. So we have some errors, let's just fix them quickly. What does it say? So it says that unexpected token colon. So there has to be something that's missing over here. So I think, okay, there's a colon here, there's a condition. So that should be fine now, that's true. Okay. So, title, we haven't got that yet. We have to go to the add new. Here, you, here we go. So we've got the title, okay? All we need to do is just add the text area. So we're gonna name it as, uh, we're gonna use the text area, but, but let's just wrap it inside of a div. And again, I can give it the same class name, form group. And then inside of it, we'll have a label And this time let's name it as content, put that as content in the text area, text area. 
Okay, so we've got the name, so name will be content. The ID will be, okay, we can't give it an ID of content. Let's give it something else. Um, let's say this is my post content. The reason for this is because we already used uh, ideas content somewhere else. So it'll clash if we use it here. Okay, so that's that's that. And rows 30, rows 10, sorry, columns 30. So we don't need the column, do we? We don't. Let's get rid of that. And uh, we need to have an on change event handler. So we're just going to use the same on change event handler. We don't have to use a different one here. And then the text area um, needs to actually close, have a closing tag. Okay, so we have a closing tag for our content. And then we need to have a submit button. Let me see how that looks. Oh, oh, it's all distorted. Well, probably because we haven't really given it a class name. So let's just add a class name of form control. And that should take care of it. Let's see. Yep, there you go, it looks good. That's the beauty of Bootstrap. And this will be the submit button. Submit button. And that's going to be button. And that's going to be submit. And over here, inside of the button, we'll just set the type as submit. Submit. Okay, and then let's have it. Let's give it a class name of btn btn secondary. And that should be it. Let's see. Yep, we got a submit button. Great. So of course it doesn't do anything, but you can see we've got a form um, created. Okay, awesome. Again, I don't want this video to be too long. So in the next video, we'll catch up together and we'll go ahead and send a post request. To, to this REST API endpoint, which WordPress has already created, so we don't have to worry about it, we just use it. Okay, uh, later on, I'm going to show you how to use the custom endpoints, uh, how to create one, in fact, and then use them. But for now, let's just use the create post one because it's already there, so it's, it's simple. Okay, awesome. If you did like my video, do uh, subscribe to my channel and, and do hit the like button. Okay, and uh, also do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Imran Etsayab. And uh, if you like the video to extend your support, please do give a star to my repository here. Okay. Awesome. So I will see you in the next. Take care. Bye-bye.